Today we are going to look at acids and bases and buffers. Um, acids and bases are, are primarily important in obviously in maintaining a pH of living system. Um, so in helping to balance that in most of our uh, intracellular and extracellular fluids we have a buffering system which we'll be looking at at the end of this particular PowerPoint. So to begin with, when we think about acids and bases, we're uh, primarily, um, I think, uh, considering what's happening with water. Um, occasionally in water molecules, we will, um, although we have just H2O or HOH, sometimes the HOH or H2O will, will um, react with each other, like we're seeing in this graphic on this side here, starting from the left-hand side working toward the right-hand side of the graphic. Sometimes they will react with each other and one of the water molecules will donate a proton. The other one will accept a proton. So we have that transfer of the H plus um, from one water molecule to the other. And that produces an OH group, which traditionally we think of as a base. And a hydronium ion, so this H3O plus, um, which we consider or, or generally think of as an acid. So looking at that hydronium ion, the more acid of the, uh, um, of the pair, um, it gives rise to acidic properties that we associate with other acids like the sour taste, the fact that it can conduct electricity, and that it turns blue litmus paper red. Um, and in general, if we're going to sort of define an acid, an acid is a substance that can increase the concentration of the hydronium ion when dissolved in water. So they have to have a hydrogen atom in their chemical structure that they can donate. As an example, let's have a look at hydrochloric acid, which of course is a strong acid, as opposed to most of the acids in biological systems, which are going to be weak acids. But we do have hydrochloric acid in our stomach, so that's not a bad example to look at. The um, equation that's here, we can see a hydrochloric acid or hydro hydrogen chloride um, when mixed in water, so uh, aqueous, is going to release a proton or donate a proton, as we would expect. That is the definition of our acid, so it does donate a proton. Um, when it donates that proton, we have a hydronium ion being formed, which takes on the characteristics of an acid. So the water molecule picks up that proton and becomes a hydronium ion. The hydroxide ion, we've um, looked at a little bit in grade 10, and then of course if you did grade 11 chem, you've done quite a lot of acid and base work, so this stuff will be um, easy for you. The hydroxide ions have the property of bases, so that slippery feeling that we get from soaps and so on, electrical conductivity, and turning red litmus paper blue. So bases are um, substances that have uh, an increased concentration of OH ions in solution. And we can form bases in a couple of ways. Uh, one way is dissociation in water where OH ions are produced from basically from the structure that's being ionized, say like sodium hydroxide. The other way to form a base is uh, to combine with uh, the uh, hydrogen ion from water directly. So let's have a look at what that looks like. As I mentioned, sodium hydroxide here has OH in its um, formula already, so when they dissociate in water, we end up with OH ions being liberated and adding to the concentration of OH or hydroxide ions in solution. Um, the kind of base we're seeing on the right is one we would associate more with our organic molecules. We can see that we've got the, the sort of organic nature, um, that amine type group here um, that we might expect to find on some organic molecules. And when we um, when we mix that with water, what ends up happening is that it's able um, to accept a proton, so that NH3 group that acts as a base is going to accept a proton, and by doing so, it's removing that proton from water so that we're left with an OH group, and that OH group obviously adds to the basic nature of the, um, of the solution. 
Right. So another thing for us to think about when we think of acids and bases is a neutralization reaction, something you learned first in grade 10 and then again in grade 11. And we understand that that uh, reaction occurs when an acid is mixed with a base. And as a uh, product of that reaction, we uh, produce water and salt. So this is the example that you're often given in grade uh, 10, hydrochloric acid or hydrogen chloride with sodium hydroxide to give us water and salt. Another thing that you uh, learn along with learning about acids and bases is the scale that we use to measure how acidic or how basic the character of the material that you're investigating. So to do that we use the pH scale and there's a, a pretty pH scale there for you. The, um, basically the pH scale is a scale that expresses uh, the acidic nature of a solution based on the hydronium ion. And it can be expressed as a uh, logarithm of uh, hydronium ions. So we could do a log equation to express them. We won't be using that. Um, something that you can um, learn or that you may have already learned or will learn about in chemistry. Um, we will just be talking about the, the numbers on the scale itself, not how we derive those. And um, we understand that pH of 7 is neutral. Anything that is less than that is acidic. And anything that is greater than that in number is basic. And that's really enough for us in the biology. OK, for um, uh, sort of be studying the behavior of these molecules, often we'll classify acids and bases as either strong or weak. Um, in the way that they sort of um, react in water or behave, I guess is a better word, in water. Um, strong acids and bases will ionize completely, so you'll have all your sort of positive and negative um, ions uh, completely broken apart, the compound completely broken apart and mixed in with the uh, positive and negative um, um, parts of the uh, water. Where with weak acids and bases, you're going to have a lot of the, the original compound will stay as is, and we only get some dissociation in water. So a strong acid, uh, an example of that would be um, hydrochloric acid or hydrogen chloride, add it to water, and we get uh, pretty much complete separation of the hydrogen from the chlorine, so 100% ionization. If this was a weak acid, we would find that a lot of the original material would be held together as a compound and only a little bit of it would dissociate. So here's a kind of a nice little graphic here. On the uh, left hand side we can see a strong acid and we start out with the acid on our uh, left hand side and then we move into uh, the sort of right hand side of that little graphic where we can see a blue and a yellow bar um, representing the separate components so they've completely dissociated where on the right hand graphic we see our purple bar uh, representing a weak acid and we can see on the uh, product side so on the right hand side of that um, that we still have a lot of the purple left and we only have a little bit of the blue and the red so only a small amount of that has dissociated. Um, the weak acids um, and weak bases tend, tend to be involved in uh, reversible reactions which make them good, um, good components of a buffering system. So if we get a, a system where the movement toward ionization versus the movement in the other direction is equal, um, then we say that that reaction is in equilibrium, equal forward and reverse reaction. So there's our little living organism. Isn't she sweet? Um, so we understand that as living systems, we have to maintain our pH. We're very sensitive to pH, and that should um, sort of twig and make you think back to what we were learning about proteins and the conformation of proteins. And given that proteins do a huge amount of work in the cell um, in terms of you know catalyzing reactions and being parts of structures, we definitely want to maintain the pH. We also talked about how pH levels will affect protein digestion in the stomach and how our 
um, enzyme, digestive enzyme there, pepsin will not become active. So it will stay as pepsinogen unless there's um, the correct pH in the stomach, uh, which activates that to start protein digestion. So all kinds of reasons why pH is important for us. A lot of cellular processes like to operate around 7, 7.2, 7.4 on the pH scale, um, apart from the places, um, very specialized places like the stomach where our uh, pH can be down around 2. Um, for the most part, we like around 7. Which brings us to buffering systems. So how does the body maintain a pH in a satisfactory zone? Um, Basically, our body has to have a way to balance if we get a little more acid um, introduced into our internal environment or a little bit more base introduced into our internal environment from some e external source. Our body needs to be able to cope with that and um, maintain the pH. So buffers are how we do that. We use it to resist significant changes in pH. Um, and generally what happens in living system is our, our buffer will consist of a conjugate acid and base pair in equilibrium. So forward and reverse reaction depending on what is required to maintain the pH of the fluid of interest, say like blood or uh, extracellular fluid. So what is a conjugate acid and base? Um, and again, I think a lot of you have studied this in, I think it's in grade 11 uh, chemistry, the Bronsted-Lowry acids. Um, Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases are, um, are involved in these buffering systems. So to start with, the, er, the Bronsted-Lowry acids are um, going to be able to transfer a proton to another substance. So they're proton donators, as we've uh, discussed our acids being before. And the bases are going to accept that proton, the hydrogen ion, from another s uh, system, from another substance. And again, as we've discussed earlier, that makes them a proton acceptor and therefore a base. And um, there's an example here in the graphic. We can see um, a base and an acid on one side, and we see a base and an acid on the other side. So they are reverse uh, reactions. On the left-hand side of the reaction, we can see that the HCO3 is considered to be a base, which means it's set up so it can accept an acid, or accept, a, sorry, a proton. And if you look at the other side, when it accepts a proton, it becomes H2CO3. And water here is acting as our acid. Um, it is going to be a proton donator. Um, and we can see on the other side that having donated its prote uh, proton, we have an OH, which gives us a basic nature. So an acid and a base on the other side, as on the reactant side, as well as on the, um, on the product side. And we can see the reverse reaction underneath that. So we can see in the bottom the what what sort of made up the base um, in the top reaction is now going to become our acid because it's going to donate a proton. And the what was our acid is going to become our base because it's able to accept a uh, hydrogen ion. And that moves that means that on the uh, product side of this, we're back to our water and our original base. So they, they can go back and forth depending on the, um, on the needs of the environment, on whether there's an acid being added or whether there's a base being added. Here's the two guys who came up with this idea, uh, Bronsted and Lowry, and the pictures here are from 1923. So the most important buffer system that we have is between carbonic acid and bicarb. And um, we produce carbonic acid when carbon dioxide reacts with water. So those are pretty common substances in living systems. And um, we have a graphic at the bottom here. We'll see a same graphic a little bit bigger on our next slide. Um, and to the left here, we see carbon dioxide mixed with water, which is going to give us carbonic acid. And that's going to um, stay in sort of equilibrium with the bicarb and hydrogen ion um, in the middle of this uh, graphic. So we can switch between um, sort of the carbonic acid and the bicarb uh, setup depending on what the needs of the So if um, if hydrogen ions are going to enter 
uh, the bloodstream. We have bicarbions there that will react with the those ions to produce carbonic acid. And if a base enters the blood and removes hydrogen ions, carbonic acid will replace those missing hydrogen ions in the blood by ionizing, uh, moving toward the um, the reverse reaction. So together they help maintain a blood pH, about 7.4 where we like it. So again, have a look at the graphic here. Um, if hydrogen ions are going to enter the bloodstream, our bicarb is able to react with those hydrogen ions, pick them up out of the blood so that the blood, in this case blood that we're talking about, uh, so the blood doesn't have a lot of the hydrogen ions floating around and produce carbonic acid. And carbonic acid um, is able to ionize, give up some hydrogen ions if there's too much base, too much uh, OH in the blood and uh, help to uh, neutralize those OH. So either way, we're either um, uh, sort of balancing out the hydrogen ion concentration um, in the blood by tying it up or uh, by letting it loose to neutralize to react with, uh, with base.